This next episode is called Wages. This 2150 episode begins with the students returning from a field trip in the transport chamber. Uh Getting tired of all this kind of stuff going on. Okay, we're back. All right, Chunker, get in your chair. All right. <laughs> Chunker, I don't like your tone of voice. Yeah, I mean, yes, sir. I'll get to my chair, sir. That's better. Okay, the rest of you get get to your seats. Okay. Boy, oh boy, I got, that, that field trip was a disaster. Yes, I know. I'm very well aware of that. Yeah, what started out as a neat rock hunting trip in Rockhound State Park in New Mexico turned out to be a to be a whole classroom being arrested. Yeah, thanks to the chunker. I can't believe the chunker has a nerve to bring joints with us on our on our field trip. Yeah, holy Joe! Oh, how dare you hit! <laughs> Yikes! It's the dreaded bottom bomber. Yes, uh, Chunker, do you want me to continue warming this little jewel up on your bottom, or are you going to be quiet? You'll be quiet. I guess this punishment paddle has gotten its message across. I'll go ahead and put it back on the wall. That's the only swatting paddle I know of that's made of petrified wood. Bob, this is made of oak. You're going to fool me. That was the weirdest field trip teacher I've ever been on in my life. Yeah, those, those cops put the cuffs on the whole classroom. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I was just digging into a, to a really promising looking vein of agate, and this policeman comes up and reads me my rights and puts the cuffs on my wrists and hauls me off. Yes, while the rest of us were out there hunting rocks, the chunker found himself a nice secluded spot behind a granite formation, taking the opportunity to get higher than a kite. Yeah, and that's when the park ranger found him. Yeah, he probably thought we all had joints. Yeah, everybody stopped talking about me. Chunker, you are responsible for the destruction of a field trip. You are also guilty of possession of illegal drugs. You ought to be glad that they didn't haul you in and put you in the slammer. I'm gonna take you to court, teacher, for hitting me. Chunker, don't tempt my finger, Ray. When you are in this school, you are subject to the methods of discipline that this school institutes. Whether it's a writing assignment, a counseling, or being reduced to a crystal. Yeah, but you put bruises on my bottom. Chunker, they won't kill you. Besides, you earned every one of them. Teacher, I remember reading in my history books back in the 1980s, I think it was. Back then, everybody was suing everybody else for the stupidest, littlest things. I mean, I don't even think teachers back then were allowed to give swats or any kind of punishment, other than a talking to. Yes, and the discipline, or I should say the lack of it in the classroom, reflected that. Keep in mind that in this classroom, I do not give out a punishment unless it is earned. It's just like uh, if I were to give out an A or a B or any other grade. Anything you get in this classroom, you have to earn it. And if you want to get an A, you have to work hard, do your homework, and study. And I'll give you an A if you deserve it. Or if you want to be punched down to a crystal or want a taste of my bottom bomber, likewise, you must earn that as well, if I think you deserve it. Yeah, that... I don't think that's fair. Chunker, it's perfectly fair. The very instant that you pulled money out of your wallet to buy those joints put you on the eligibility list for punishment. Nobody forced you to buy those reefers, nobody forced you to pay for them, and nobody forced you to light up behind those rocks when we were on our field trip. You did it of your, your own accord, and therefore you earned the punishment yourself. You have nobody to blame but yourself. And I might add that period of time, Joe, that you were talking about, the mid-1980s and uh, a decade before and after, it seemed that people were more than willing to receive the uh, rewards that come from hard work. But the strange thing was, whenever somebody did anything wrong, it seemed like nobody was responsible. It was either blamed on somebody's past history or their environment, anything, just so that the person himself wouldn't feel responsible for it. Okay. Chunker, I want you to go into the multi-purpose room. 
Oh, come. You're gonna get the silkworm punishment. Oh, not that. Oh, no. You already gave me punishment. Chunker, I gave you punishment for defying authority and then verbally attacking these students. Uh, what do you want, Jim? Uh, teacher, what's the silkworm punishment? That's a punishment I give out to all who are caught smoking marijuana. And that's a punishment where the offending student has to uh, take a box of mulberry leaves and eat them. That's weird, eating mulberry leaves? Is it any more weird than inhaling the smoke of weeds? I guess. Get going, Chunker. If you give me the slightest bit of lip, it's nuggets away. Oh, I know. Well, at least I found a couple agate specimens. That trip wasn't a total loss. Yeah, uh, anybody who managed to find any specimens, go ahead and uh, label them and put them back there in the uh, specimen containers for that purpose. Yeah, what do you want, Al? Uh, teacher, I got a question. What is it? How come there aren't any women in this classroom? Uh, what was that? How come there aren't any female types in this classroom? Well, that's very simple. The guy who makes this tape, he doesn't have a female voice. He can only do guys, so uh, that's the reason why. Oh, okay, I was just curious. Okay, I want the rest of you to do that geology assignment up on the board. Uh, later during the lunch break. Uh, hi, Loki. Uh, I got a question, Joe. Uh, what is it? How come you like punishment so much? I don't like punishment. Where'd you get that idea? No, I mean, how come you think everybody should be punished? Lukey, I wasn't saying that I wanted everybody to be punished. I was just saying that there's a place for punishment. Just like there's a place for, for reward. Just like what the teacher was saying. I think that's kind of hard. Well, what do you think should happen to somebody who does wrong? I think people ought to understand why he did it and not be so hard on it. Come on, Lukey, that's what the courts are for. They find out all the circumstances that, that were involved in the crime. And they weigh all that to find out exactly what happened. But if they find the person who's been accused is guilty of, like, robbery or holding somebody up with a gun, that person should be punished for it. What happens if he just watched too many violent shows as a kid? Maybe he couldn't help it. Lukey, that's a cop-out. He has rights, too. Lukey, the very second that that guy picked up a gun to rob somebody, that ended his rights. Nobody made him do that. Nobody made the chunker toke on those joints behind that rock formation. The minute you put yourself in motion to break the law or to do something bad to somebody else, your rights end at that point. And I don't know how you're going to take this, but if you want to be really truthful about it, there isn't a person on this earth who really has rights. What do you mean? Because every man and woman on this earth has sinned against God. Man has lost his rights before the Creator. And the wages that, that man has earned for that is eternal damnation. Oh boy, here we go again with the fire and brim. Come off it, Lukey. You know very well that Jesus talked about that more than just about anybody else in the Bible. How can you, how can you even call yourself a Christian if you don't believe what the Scripture says? And you know that the Bible is very graphic in its description of hell. And it's also very descriptive in its description of heaven. I mean, yes, man's fallen, but God has provided the way through Jesus Christ. If a man will just surrender to him and submit to him and be obedient, that, that terrible sentence is lifted. And that person, whoever does that, is, is given citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. What are we always going to talk about church and religion? Lukey, sometimes I really wonder if you're really born again. Yes, I am. I go to church. Loki, you can train a, a chimp to go to church. You could program a computer to sing hymns. And any engineer could build a machine to drop money into a plate. Is your heart moldable in the hands of God? Are you surrendered to him every day of the week, trusting in him with all your heart? No, I'm not a fanatic. And this is getting too heavy. I'll catch you later. Come on, Loki. Oh, boy. Anyhow, hi, Kodo. What are you doing? Oh, me and Lukey were just talking. Okay, do you have a quarter I could borrow? Uh, yeah, just a second. Let's see, we got some here. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, no. What's wrong? I have to sneeze. Oh, no. Oh, no. Try sneezing into that empty Coke can there. Okay. Oh boy. Wow. Look at
at that can. Uh, hey, Joe, what you doing? Come over here and have a look. Huh. I thought I heard one of Koto's sneezes, but it kind of sounded funny. I sneezed into this can. Man, that can's all pooched out. Uh, how come you got your thumb over the opening? Because the sneeze is trapped inside. What? If I let my thumb off, it'll go. Oh, there's the bell. Joe, what is he talking about? I'm afraid to ask. I have a disc drive with pneumonia. <laughs> this has got to be the weirdest classroom I've ever been in my life. Come on, Fred, get to your chair. Yeah, unless you want a taste of his, one of his fiery nuggets. <laughs> I like McNuggets. I didn't say McNuggets. <laughs> I got Huggets with nugget neuralgia. Fred, what have I told you about those dingy remarks? <laughs> I spent that one out just before the bell rang. <laughs> oh, teacher, you don't have any right to do that. I said that goofy remark before the second bell rang. Frib, this is my classroom and I can change the rules as I so desire. If I hear one of your dingy remarks, you're gonna get it. Oh, brother. <laughs> Come on, that punch-up ray didn't hurt that bad. In fact, I don't even like to call it a punch-up ray because it doesn't really punch you, it just roughs you up a little bit and causes no physical injury whatsoever. It isn't half as bad as getting one of those swats. <laughs> I still don't like them. Well, then stop doing those goofball remarks. I won't say yes, sir, because I'd be lying. Not another word from you. <laughs> Acknowledged. Mm, I think this classroom's on peyote. No, Jim, this classroom isn't on peyote. It's just, uh, <laughs> different. Oh, hi, Chunk. Are you done eating them leaves? Yeah, and I got a bellyache, too. Get in your chair. Remember that bellyache next time you get tempted to toke on a joint. All right, uh, did you all have a good lunchtime? Yeah, as good as usual. I got bit by ants. Uh, whereabouts? One of them got me right between the toes. I mean, where were you outside? I was over next to those vending machines. Uh, we got rid of that hill last year. I guess it's come back. Okay, well, I get the maintenance android to take care of it. Okay, uh, how many of you finished your English assignment? Oh, good, that's everybody. Okay, go ahead and pass them up to the front. Uh, Freb, I want to tell you something. I did not appreciate your uh, 2D fruity colored paper that you handed in last time. Let's see. Okay, I guess they're all here. What do you mean by that, teacher? I mean, Frib handed in a, a report with three or four different colors of ink. I think there was green, blue, red, and purple. That plays havoc with my video receptors. But those colors are required to keep my tribbles from rebelling. <laughs> Not again. Frib, I don't believe you had the nerve to give me that dingy remark right in the middle of class time. It slipped. Whatever. Okay, I'm glad that you all uh, managed to uh, hand in a paper. Uh, Koto, what are you doing with that soda can? Uh, nothing much. You know you're not supposed to bring drinks into the classroom. This is an empty can. It contains no soda pop. Mm, well, then why don't you toss it in the garbage? Uh, I can't. Come up here. Uh-oh. Come on. Okay. Yes, teacher. Give me that soda can. But teacher, I can't. You're holding your thumb over the opening. Obviously, there's something in there that you don't want me to see. Oh, no. Everybody be quiet. But teacher... I said everybody be quiet. Teacher, you don't understand. I... Kodo. Okay, here it is. Well, turn loose of it. Teacher, I can't. Believe me, teacher. Kodo, if you don't take your hand off of this soda can... Okay, teacher. I'm hitting the deck. What hit me? I tried to warn you, teacher. 
Dakota, what are you doing with explosives in this classroom? But I didn't have any explosives. Yes, Joe. Teacher, I was out on the, the school grounds and and Kodo had to sneeze, and so he, he sneezed into that soda can. And it was trapped in there, and, and, and... I don't believe it. You mean that's what exploded in my face? Look at the front of this classroom, it's a shambles. You're not gonna reduce Kodo, are you? No. That automatic protection machine language circuit has been uh, modified. So now if something catastrophic like this happens, I can stop and think and make a decision rather than automatically reducing whoever caused it. Okay, Kodo, you can go ahead and get back to your seat. Don't you dare pick up a soda can and, and, and sneeze into it again. I know, teacher, I won't. That's ridiculous. The guy who makes these tapes sure came up with a weird one this time. What are you talking about? Uh, that, that, that guy who makes these tapes, you know, like you were saying earlier? Nobody makes these tapes. What tapes are you talking about? Well, earlier this morning you said we're on tape and that some guy makes us. I don't remember that. That's weird. This is a classroom. I'm an instructor. You're students. We're not on tape. All right, if you say so. Okay, I want the rest of you to do, do that assignment on the board. That's the end of this episode.